So good afternoon, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all, wherever you are um, tuning into this session right now. Uh, welcome to this information session, uh, specifically for the dual degree program between the University of Hong Kong and the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, my name is Vicky. I am the senior program manager at the University of Hong Kong. And today I am joined by fellow panelists who are here to speak to you about this very unique and interesting opportunity. Uh, we have Amy. Uh, Amy, would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Sure. Hi, my name is Amy Jarek, and I'm actually coming to you from France today, but I am um, well versed in Berkeley, having been um, in charge of admissions there for six years. And now I am an international specialist trying to help international students navigate the admissions process and the dual degree programs. Welcome, Amy. And also you see on my side, uh, we have two current students uh, at the dual degree program. They're both year two students. And uh, maybe I know we're, we'll ask you to introduce more about yourself and maybe let them know about your name, majors, sort of thing. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I am Julia Verdict, and I'm a second year student uh, at HKU right now. Um, I have two majors. I'm uh, currently majoring uh, in China Studies for a Bachelor of Social Sciences at HKU and also am intending to study economics at UC Berkeley. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kita Mueller, and I'm also a year two student here at HKU right now. Um, I major in politics and public administration at HKU, and I'm intending on majoring in economics at Berkeley. Great. So let's get started on this. Um, this dual degree program is actually, we've launched this a number of years back. But when you think about this dual degree program, you are really looking at spending four years of your life interlacing and collating different experiences together. Uh, you're going to look at two different cultures, two different degrees from two institutions, but it also opened up doors to a lot of different possibilities. Um, that is unlimited of possibilities. Uh, as I mentioned, and I'm sure many of you may or will already be very familiar with how highly recognized the University of California Berkeley is. Uh, the University of Hong Kong ourselves are not doing too badly in that regard as well. So definitely degrees from two world leaders in terms of universities. Uh, you're going to be looking at aspects, perspectives from an Asian perspective, an Asian centric perspective, and a Western centric perspective from the United States. Um, networks, both students from this dual degree will be considered alumni of both institutions. So imagine that you're opening up the doors to a world of possibilities. And the two Bay Areas, uh, the San Francisco Bay Area is actually very well known in the world. Uh, but also you may also be looking at the Greater Bay Area in China um, and, the, and the region as well. We've been talking about this idea of globalization for many years. Uh, and definitely the dual degree is part of that in response to creating a more globalized perspective, a more globalized learning experience for our students. But at the same time, what we're trying to do is create a platform where the students can integrate their perspectives, integrate their knowledge, and to integrate a global culture with the local culture, with their own local culture, and truly make meaning out of being a globalized education. So let me start off with the University of Hong Kong. At this dual degree, you will be starting your first two years at the University of Hong Kong. So let me give you a bit of information about the university first. At the dual degree at HKU, you will have access to two bachelor degree programs. The first one will be with the Faculty of Arts, it will be the Bachelor of Arts program. And under the Bachelor of Arts program, you will have access to 22 different majors under all of these schools at the, at the faculty. And also, another option for uh, what you will be doing is a lot of practical hands-on experience as well, uh, be it in linguistics, be it in uh, comparative literature, be it in global creative industries, working in terms of languages, cultures, how they intersect. So part of these, you might be looking at using your language abilities very timely in these days to help out uh, in terms of infographics on COVID-19 that were being published is actually supported by the School of Modern Languages. And these are actual hands-on practical examples of how you can imagine your uh, Bachelor of Arts degree to be. Uh, another option will be with the Bachelor of Social Sciences. And under the Bachelor of Social Sciences, you will have access to disciplinary majors that are listed out here. So you have geography, politics and public administration, psychology, sociology. All of these will be options that are open to students looking at dual degree programs at the university. And you will also be completing what we are called 
uh, social innovation and global citizenship as well. That will be a very much a key part of your studies. I'm not too, speaking too extensively about your options at HKU because today at the information session uh, and the information day, I'm sure you've already had a chance to hear directly from uh, speakers at the Faculty of Arts and Faculty of Social Sciences. Um, and so what I will do now is I will pass the time off to Amy and if Amy will take us through the experience at Berkeley. Sure, thank you. Um, so I just want to take a minute to just brag about the campus that is Berkeley. It is a part of the University of California, which actually has nine undergraduate campuses. Berkeley was the first. Um, and so it is considered uh, what we call in the US the flagship. Um, it is the number one public university um, according to many rankings, um, but I think it's more than that. Um, it is really an opportunity to be in the heart of um, a, a lot of uh, conversations around change and the future, but also really great investigations into um, the past and what brought us here. So the academic programs are top notch. Um, you are in a space where um, you'll see that there have been um, Nobel Prize winners, there have been um, poet laureates. However, they're also teachers at heart. So the opportunity to interact with a, a, a physics professor who has won a Nobel Prize, but also teaches um, a seminar for first year students is something you can experience at a place like Berkeley. Um, I'd also just say you have to keep in mind that when you're coming to Berkeley through this program, you are entering through a very specific door and that is into the College of Letters and Science. College of Letters and Science is an incredible place to study. Um, it has a great opportunity for you to choose multiple majors. It's actually our largest undergraduate academic program. So the variety there, the types of people you'll meet, the types of faculty. Um, it is, the, the, I think, one of the most diverse and dynamic places um, to study on campus. We obviously are not able to offer every single major as a part of the dual degree, but we've been working every year to offer more and more and some of our most popular ones as well. So you'll see, you've already heard um, economics, but also um, psychology is often quite, um, quite popular, philosophy, um, a lot of our history degrees, they are all very well um, coordinated to be able to make sure that you can do this HKU Berkeley joint degree, finish in time, have two degrees and be able to study one of these programs that is interesting to you. Um, let's talk just a minute about the way these, um, the curriculum is structured. So these courses are obviously designed so that if you weren't doing a dual degree, you'd be doing longer term degrees at one institution. So we've had to blend our curriculum a bit. Um, you'll still very much distinctly experience the HKU culture and the Berkeley culture, but we've had to think about how we can make sure that you as a student never have to repeat something that you've already taken at HKU when you come to Berkeley, or you might, you, we wanna be sure you never feel like you weren't prepared fully for what comes next in year two, three, or four. So a lot of the common core programs are gonna be taught um, at HKU. Um, you're gonna find that the introductory courses are going to address both majors at HKU and at Berkeley. Um, you do need to be ready to think about um, the coursework that would be required to, to be sure that the research methodologies are, are well understood and in place because you'll need those at both institutions. Um, I think that you will find that Berkeley has um, excellent advising staff who will help you understand what it means to have elective and breadth requirements, because I appreciate that right now that has very little meaning as I say it out loud, but the advising staff can really help you understand what that means from a very broad range of studies and a broad range of courses. Uh, we want you to be able to experience the, the language of those spaces. Um, and obviously you're gonna be doing your um, experimental learning um, with HKU. When you get to Berkeley, um, by the time you get there, the expectation is that year three and four, you are really into 
your major, your program of study, um, you'll still be focusing in on some Berkeley specific courses. And of course, because the capstone project is integral to HKU, and you'll be doing that at the end of your degree, Berkeley will also work with you to be sure that is completed. So I think that was a lot of information. We can answer more in the questions, but I want to pass it on now to the students who are actually living this experience. I can probably tell you much more about the realities and the wonders of it. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Once again, we're Kira and Julia, and we're going to be talking a little bit about our experience so far um, participating in this program. Do you want me to start? Um, so I'm Kita. Uh, I'm a year two student, as I already explained, uh, and I'm 20 years old. I'm from Oakland, California, which is very, very close to Berkeley. Um, I, I'm Julia, and I'm 18 years old. I'm also a year two student, and I'm from Alameda, California, which is also very close to Berkeley. So we're from a very similar area. Uh, we grew up very close to the university. Um, to, so to start off on why we chose this program and what made us so attractive to it, um, for me personally, um, I'm a China studies major and I chose that because I was interested in um, international relations and um, interactions between US and China. And I really wanted to focus on China specifically and um, not just do IR in general. So when I found out that uh, HKU offers this China studies major program and I could also attend Berkeley through this dual degree system, I thought, oh, this is perfect for me. This is what I want to do. And I was so excited to finally have a chance to uh, you know explore both of my interests and not only do that but take china studies in uh, an area where chinese culture is present so that was one of the strongest reasons for me to apply to this program um yeah for me i think one of the primary reasons i chose this program uh, is i'm a politics student here at hku i have a little bit of experience kind of learning about politics in the u.s but um i think because U.S. politics really tends to dominate global news. I wanted to learn politics kind of from an outside perspective, not only about the world, but also about how the U.S. is viewed outside of the United States. Um, I also was really looking to have an international experience, have kind of an unconventional college experience. Um, so this, this program just seemed like a good choice for me. Also, um, because I actually was somewhat intrigued by the, the academic structure of the program, being able to get two degrees in four years. And so for all of these reasons, I decided to come to this program. Um, so just some more uh, discussion about our majors in case anybody wants to ask later about uh, what we're studying. Um, I'm studying a China studies major, which is a joint faculty program, which means that I can take classes from both the arts and social sciences faculty. So that's quite a unique major if anybody wants to ask about that. Um, and at Berkeley, I'm, I'm intending to study in economics. And I say intended because I have to apply to the major once I go to Berkeley. So I'm not guaranteed a spot in that major quite yet. Yeah, so um, how my major works at HKU is pretty standard to how the politics and public administration major at HKU uh, is generally structured. But because uh, you know I'm also trying to fit in an economics major at Berkeley in four years, uh, you take the normal politics courses, but uh, you have to take, you have to start taking disciplinary electives and advanced courses quite early on, like maybe in the first year or even in the beginning of the second year. Um, I'm also an intended economics major at Berkeley or possibly political economy. Uh, as Julia already said, we have to apply to these majors, so I haven't entirely made up my mind about which major I'm going to be doing at Berkeley. Um, but I think it's, you know, important thing to note that actually Berkeley is relatively flexible with the majors within the College of Letters and Arts and Science, as long as you uh, are able to adequately finish all of the prerequisites while you're at HKU. Um, I also take language courses while I'm here at HKU. I've studied Mandarin Chinese and I'm planning on studying Cantonese Chinese and also planning on doing Japanese between here and Berkeley. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the structure of my academic plan right now. Um, and so we wanted to bring up some key academic points that we uh, shared or experienced together and we thought we, was important to share with you. And um, the first, of course, was rigor. Uh, once we, you know, took more classes through the program, we realized that there is a big academic commitment required 
and we have to take a full course load for most of our semesters at HKU so far because we have to meet the requirements for two degrees. Um, and I think it's worth it because I'm interested in what I'm studying and I enjoy it. But uh, you know, you have to know that that is a uh, part of the program. Um, I think most of these academic points were already mentioned previously. Um, uh, I can also add on to taking summer classes. I think a really great option if you're doing this and you don't want to be too stressed during the semester is to take summer classes. I think both me and Kita are considering taking summer classes and it opens up more options. You don't have to worry too much about getting every single thing done in the semester and, and pushing yourself too hard so that it's you know unhealthy. Um, so you know, don't worry too much. If you think it's it's way too hard, you can always have that option of taking summer classes. Um, uh, also, um, as part of this dual degree program, there is this experiential learning component if you uh, attend the School of Social Sciences at HKU. And, I have already completed this component. It's a really valuable experience. I really enjoyed it. I, you get to intern uh, through HKU's system. And I chose to intern in Hong Kong with a nonprofit that works with uh, refugees and asylum seekers. It was an incredible experience. I got to learn so much about Hong Kong, especially coming as an American. I had no idea about so much of the things. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So that's part of this program. It's a really good experience for you no matter where you're coming from and I really highly recommend it. Okay, so <laughs> just to expand, this is some of the more fun stuff outside of academics. We wanted to you know, share a little bit more about some of the extracurricular activities and, and things we've done outside of school. Yeah, so uh, here's some pictures of just mine and Julia's experience over the last year. Uh, it's a little bit limited because of the COVID situation, but um, we basically live as uh, like normal full-time non-local students while we're here at HKU. And so we have full access to like uh, hall activities. If you live in the hall, residential college activities, um, on-campus clubs and associations. Um, so I, I think Julia and I are both involved this year in like English debate team. I have some uh, activities at my college. Julia likes to go hiking a lot. So these kinds of things, uh, we still are able to do in our student life, even though we have a lot of classes. Um, so in terms of student life, if you choose this program, you should expect that there's actually quite a lot of options available for you to have fun outside of your studies. Yeah, I think these are just some more pictures. Yeah, here's some more. <laughs> these are some more photos of. Um, yeah. Okay, and then uh, we also want to talk a little bit about our experiences with Berkeley so far. So even though we haven't attended classes there yet, we grew up very close to UC Berkeley. We took high school summer programs there. We've explored the campus. We've gone to many events there. Um, and so what, what we can say from our limited experience so far, we wanted to share with you. Yeah, um, I also have limited experience with Berkeley, but I have uh, briefly interned there and taken summer courses there before. Um, and the campus is basically home to me. It's, it's very close to my house. And so if anyone who's watching this has questions about like student life or kind of the campus, Basically, I think besides like academic programs, Julie and I can kind of explain more of the, the social atmosphere, the student life aspect of what being at Berkeley is like. Yeah. And so we wanted to mention uh, briefly that because we grew up in the area, we know uh, quite a bit about uh, what it's like to live in the US and live in California and what there's to do around the area. So if you're particularly worried about what it's gonna be like to be so far away from home and what the experience is gonna be, uh, please feel free to ask us about that. You know, we've been there for uh, over 10 years. We know what it's like. So, you know, don't be afraid, just ask us about that. And these are some pictures I took when I was back home for break. And, I thought they were really pretty to represent, you know, uh, what the natural life is like in the area. Okay, and then of course, we're done. So if you have any questions, yeah, now, just ask us questions. Okay, should I give you back? Oh, right, this is our contact information. Oh, yeah, yes. Um, so you can also contact us through here if you have any like specific questions, or if you'd like to have like an extended discussion about what the program is like, just feel free to reach out to us. Well, thank okay. you, um, both Julia and Kiata, for your sharing. Um, what we will do is, um, I think some of you um, may have questions for the ladies um, about their experience uh, and also about the dual degree in general. And I think we can definitely make this a more interactive session. So what we will do, uh, feel free to use the Q&A function on the Zoom webinar to ask any questions you might have. But while you're doing that, um, Amy, let's give them a bit of factual information about the applications first, maybe. Yeah, 
Yes, of course. I think if we talk a little bit about the application, we might answer some of the questions, um, at least the basics of them. To do this program, you have to apply. Obviously, this is a program designed for students who are coming straight out of high school or secondary school. Um, and you would actually apply using um, a couple different tools. The first one is the application for the University of California. So this is one application. It serves all nine undergraduate campuses. So it's the same application you would use to apply to UCLA, UC San Diego. This is the application that for you to begin this process, you must complete it, you must submit it. And it has to um, go through the review process at Berkeley first. So University of California application, I will just tell you, it is completely self-reported. So everything that you want to um, share with the university, everything that they ask you to share is coming directly from you as a student. So you, you list the courses you take, you list the grades and marks you've received. Um, there is an opportunity for you to list any tests that you might have taken. You're absolutely um, gonna be doing some writing. There's a eight questions, you need to pick four of them and you need to reply um, as perhaps the only way for the admissions office uh, on both spaces um, at first to get to know you, right? To really introduce yourself through your writing and the application. Um, that application is part one. Part two is a supplemental application that is actually available. Um, it's available now where you will find that there's a little bit more extra work to do, but not a whole lot more. I think that's the space where you really start to talk to both institutions, both HKU and Berkeley. So you're these questions that, have, that are put forward are coming to you now, not just from University of California, but that supplement is designed to make sure both admissions committees on both campuses understand who you are, why this program is for you, and, and what you would do there, what you would do with this program. And then finally, the third part, I'll just say for, um, for Hong Kong students only, the JUPAS application um, is is still a, a, a component that needs to be completed. And um, I am not an expert on that. So if we have questions later, we'll address it. But I do wanna be very sensitive to the fact that we don't know um, the background of anyone listening to this. So if you are in Hong Kong and JUPAS is a part of your program, you need to complete that um, as you would normally for HKU. The other two might be unique, the University of California application and the supplemental. The deadline is November 30th, hard and fast. Um, it is the one application. We have no early applications. This is the one application to be able to apply not only to this program, but also to the University of California. Right, so as you have completed uh, the application, here's a bit more of what we're looking for. Um, it will be a joint admissions committee in the sense that both the University of California, Berkeley and HKU will be evaluating your application. And here are the things that we will look for. Uh, we look at your academic history and achievements. So particularly in this year, I think um, if you speak to all the universities, we will be keep telling you, give us as much contextual information, history in, uh, of academic history as you can, because that will help inform us about what you've gone through, especially when all of you who are applying to university this year have had quite an unusual uh, junior and senior experience so far. Uh, we will also be looking at interest and profile. Uh, that would include information on why you're interested in the dual degree program, um, but also things that you've done outside of classes. So again, we're not looking for students who, are, we're looking for students who are interested and who have the academic uh, readiness to join this program. But at the same time, we're also trying to look for someone who is enjoying life, someone who knows that, you know, they're, they're doing things for a good cause. These are actually very important characteristics that we look for as well. And what we do look at also is the intention. So both Julia and Kieta told us about, you know, why they're interested. They told us about what they expected, um, how they find this program. And these are the ideas that you will want to be incorporating specifically in the supplemental essay that we have on the dual degree application. Um, it's a short essay. And we're asking you to tell us, now that you're applying specifically to this dual degree program, that is going to mean more work for you, um, more classes that you have to take. 
Uh, what do you expect to gain out of it? How do you expect this dual degree to help achieve your different goals and aspirations? It doesn't have to be, you're not bound by this, obviously, but this is actually a window for us to understand what you're thinking and what is going through in your mind on all of that. Um, I'm just gonna quickly touch some of the requirements for applying to uh, this program. And they are the requirements at the, the very baseline, they are the requirements to apply for the University of California. Um, the academic piece is, is important. Obviously, this is open for students who have completed their um, senior secondary courses. They've finished high school. Um, you will be applying while you're still doing that, most likely. Um, but this is a program, four years program designed to immediately follow high school. And we need to see that you have successful completion of high school. Um, the next one is, is a little bit misleading in that to apply, you have to have a passing grade or better in all of your courses, but it is a selective process. And so if you're applying to the Berkeley campus or to this program, you want to be aware that um, successful candidates are probably doing better than passing, um, but the requirement to apply means that every one of your courses um, will have need to have a C or equivalent of passing or better. Also understand that we won't necessarily get to see the, the grades that you receive in your final year of secondary school. That's okay, that's normal um, for us, but we do look to see what kind of courses you're taking. So we wanna pay close attention to know that you are taking the most rigorous courses that uh, you can that are right right fit for you following following those rigorous courses in high school comes this next layer of rigorous courses at the university and we feel there needs to be a continuum so we will look to see what types of courses you take in your final year and then i think um it, it's achievements in in your own qualifications so um keep in mind that that a lot of our work is about finding the context. And so being able to achieve in an IB program, we have to understand what that IB program offered and what it means. Um, understanding that international teams are a part of our admissions process as well. So please don't feel like if you aren't in kind of a traditional 4.0 A to C um, curriculum that we won't understand, we will. We search for context to understand your qualifications, but we also search to see that you are achieving um, and achieving at a pretty high level in, in that context, in that academic context. Okay. Right, so a bit more um, specifically, and also I think this um, for students across different examination qualifications, uh, you may, you would wish to note that uh, Berkeley is currently is going to be test blind for the full 2021-2022 applicants, uh, meaning that on your application to the University of California, Berkeley, they are not going to look at your SAT reasoning test result. Um, however, keep in mind that um, we will still ask you to submit that for the university, for this dual degree program particularly, because this is still going to help fulfill a requirement at the HKU side. Um, so there is a bit of a nuance happening here that while for the Berkeley assessment, that it is going to be going to test blind for HKU because we do have a set of admissions requirement that all students have to fulfill. For students who are in the normally in the only a US high school curriculum or in a curriculum where your, your examination board does not have an exit exam that is assessed for all candidates, we do need some sort of uh, public benchmarking. And at that point, you may be using your SAT or ACT result. So keep in mind that this information is going to help HKU on the academic side of assessment and meeting the requirements, uh, but it is not going to affect the assessment at the Berkeley and especially for the single degree admissions at Berkeley. Um, that is something that you might wish to know. But what that also means is for students, if you're a DSE student, an IB student, or an A-level student, and you're applying to this dual degree program, and you have not been able to take the SAT up until now for your application, you will still be eligible to apply for this program as an entrance for the for 2021 or for 2022 applicant. You also have to provide proof of language proficiency. So there is the first one is an English proficiency. Obviously at HKU and at Berkeley, we are English medium institutions 
meaning that the courses are done in English. Um, and so you will have to provide that. Uh, if you may already have met it uh, with your IB courses, you may have done it at your GCSE level, or if not, there is always a TOEFL and IELTS options that you might have. At HKU and also at the evaluation, we also look at students who have provide proof of proficiency in the language other than English. And it is not supposed to be a Chinese requirement. In fact, we have students uh, coming to us with Korean, Spanish, French. I have seen Latin uh, once, one or two years back. So we did take that as a proof of proficiency in the language other than like, English. It is uh, exactly that. So it is not, again, it's not a Chinese requirement, but this is something that we do look for as a student, uh, especially in the program that we're looking at students who are more globally minded, uh, what we would look at. Okay, um, I am going to run through this very long list and um, do my best to try to help you understand this one single point. When we do review um, in the University of California system, we're doing a comprehensive review. We also call it a holistic review. And why that matters is because this is a long list, but you'll notice that no one, is, no one thing on this list is in bold or underlined, or they're not even numbered, right? They're in no particular order. I think that's really important for you to understand because our process is actually suggesting um, to you as a student that you bring everything you have and we will look at all of it without one piece of it outweighing the others. Now, having said that, we are academic institutions. And so I mentioned earlier that um, being having academic achievement is important. It always will be. But because we have so many people who are applying with high academic achievement, we also have an opportunity to look beyond and really think about what students are bringing to us in addition to their academic achievement. So I'm just going to go through this list and because this list is actually very comprehensive itself, um, some of these things wouldn't even apply to a student who was coming from um, a country other than the US or even a state other than California, but you will see these terms and if you are coming from one of those places, it's important to remember it's a part of the holistic process. So the interview performance is obviously one thing that we um, have the luxury of, of doing with this program that wouldn't be in a normal Berkeley application process. So how you um, present yourself in the interview will be assessed. Your academic performance, we use shorthand to call it the GPA, but if you don't have that, it's okay. We're looking to see your academic performance and how it's measured. Test scores. If you have them, if you don't, we did talk about how the SAT and ACT is not required for Berkeley, but many people will have uh, AP test scores or subject tests, SAT subject test scores. So those may still be things that you could submit and be a part of this comprehensive review. Um, how many academic courses you've been taking, their rigor, as I mentioned before, um, and your performance in them. ELC is very specific to California students. It means that you're in the top um, California high school student, top set of California high school students. And we do use that to assess um, in locally in the state of California. Um, quality of your senior year. We already talked about this. I hope this message is getting um, through clearly. Uh, we do need to know that you have a very strong senior year program academically. Um, your performance relative to your opportunities available. So if your school only offered, uh, let's say you're in an AP program and they only offered three APs throughout the whole program and you took three of them, well, you've done everything you could. But if they offered 12 and you've taken three, then that's a very different math, right? So that's, the, that's what we're talking about in terms of what you're offered versus what you take. Um, you may have opportunities to do special programs, projects, research, um, internships, externships in an academic field. We would review that. Anything that is um, an improvement in your academic performance. So what we want to see is an upward trend um, headed towards graduation of high school. Making sure that any special talents, achievements, awards, um, things that you have been um, acknowledged for on the school level, on the national level, maybe international level, those would be incorporated into our review. 
And then anything that maybe um, had like special events, opportunities for you to have been engaged um, outside of the classroom, but still um, really showing us the, the skill sets and, and um, the real potential that you bring to campus. Um, I think we want to always be mindful that um, the students at Berkeley represent a very diverse um, set of, of global um, citizens. And we always want to try to take into consideration their background, where they come from. Um, and as I said, we want you to take full advantage of the opportunities you have, but we have to recognize in this review that not everybody is offered the same opportunities in their high schools which sometimes might, we may lead us to this next um, link to the location of your secondary school, um, where you're from, are you an international student, are you US, are you dual citizen, um, are you a California resident, those things can play into it. Um, and then obviously, if you are um, very, um, very skilled at a specific subject, um, you will likely show us that through a series of things. You'll have taken all the top courses and gotten good grades. You will have been able to show us subject tests or, or, um, or other tests that really point to one specific topic that is your, um, your focus of interest. And that is not a requirement because the beauty of our program is that you actually can choose and find once you get more um, accustomed to the university setting but we do find that students come into this process sometimes already knowing what they want to study and we want to recognize that as a part of the review right okay. so it, it's a very long list obviously it is a long list <laughs> as we mentioned um, it is part of a holistic evaluation so these are all different bits and pieces that will make up your evaluation um, let's do some basic housekeeping um, before we go on to sort of uh, more of the questions. Uh, I see actually questions about these actually as well. So tuition fees. Uh, when you're a student under this dual degree program, you will be assessed and paying the tuition fees at the institution where you're studying. So for your first two years, you will be studying at HKU and your fees assessed will be according to the HKU. So whether or not you're a Hong Kong resident uh, or not, whether you're a non-local or local student, that will be a differential fee. Uh, and at Berkeley, the fees are calculated per, uh, according to credits uh, and in the semester. So uh, in 2019, that is roughly what one semester uh, worth of credits will, be, will cost. And that depends on whether or not you're a California resident or a non California resident in terms of the fees. Um, housing, um, students, you are applying through the halls. If you're a local student, if you're a non-local overseas student, you apply for CEDARS for your year one housing. And also when you return to Berkeley, um, there is the international house of student cooperative option for year three uh, for students who are returning to Berkeley as well. So, so, um, um, I think we just, go ahead. Go on, sorry. <laughs> I think we just want to finish up by uh, once again, recognizing um, what the students have already brought out, what we've tried to bring out is that um, this program is for a student who is gonna have to do a significant amount of academic work in the university, obviously, right? Is ready to commit to that level of work but is really excited about finding um, out about the world through a different lens. And then being able to combine those, uh, those perspectives into one space and two degrees. Um, I think that earlier, Vicki mentioned that um, you will be uh, an alum of both of these institutions and the networks available to you um, are powerful um, and impressive. But I think also just more at a micro level, the opportunity for you to grow in these two different, very energetic, diverse spaces, and then combine those experiences uh, is it's amazing and it's unique. And um, we hope that you will see it that way and then you'll explore it. And hopefully in the next um, few minutes, we can help answer any questions that you might have about how to do it, so. Definitely. Um, so we have some questions that have come in as we were speaking. So maybe uh, let me pick one that is um, probably one of the first uh, students to type up the question. 
Um, tips for writing the UC essays. Um, students, Amy. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah, you go first. You did. You did it recently. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so. I think with the UC essays, I, I did a lot of essays for my college applications. And the thing with the UC essays is it's kind of unique because you write you write four and they're relatively short. Uh, and there's a great diversity in the questions. And I think actually there's one question where you can write about anything that you want. Um, and I think like my main tips for writing these UC essays is that they are short, so you need to keep them concise, but it's very important that you keep them interesting. I think um, like just, this sounds like kind of cliche, but really just like being yourself in the essay, uh, I think will actually really help your essays stand out. Like you can make it a little bit more of a kind of a narrative structure rather than just saying like, oh, here's what I did and here's why it's important. Um, I've seen like a lot of stellar essays that I feel are actually about relatively mundane topics. So I don't think that you should shoot to write your essays about the most impressive things that you can think of. Like sometimes the most thoughtful essays and the most meaningful essays are about things that are relatively normal. Like I actually really remember um, seeing a stellar essay when my friends and I were working on UC applications that my friend wrote that was simply about like taking care of her little sister and how that's impacted her life. So it's not so much about choosing something that's super impressive and super amazing and super unique, but rather making a really thoughtful essay about the things that actually impact your life and demonstrate who you are. Yeah, I think that was really well said. Um, I was on the group of, uh, of admissions directors who created those questions because we wanted to get to a place where we knew that students had choice. So you've got eight questions to choose. You need to pick four of them. And I think that's an important piece of, of your ability to, to direct the conversation where you want to in the application. Um, but also remember that um, they, they are short. They're very short. 350 words goes fast. and um, they are pretty direct questions. So be sure that you read the question carefully and that you're answering it uh, directly. I think um, there is a tip sheet that you can download from the University of California website, which is pretty helpful. It was designed to really help people just reflect and generate questions that might then um, propel you to get your uh, proverbial pen to paper, right? Because that's the hardest part. Right, thank you. Um, so let's we take out. Okay, um, I think this one would be for the students. Um, was it has it been easy to plan out your courses? Um, were your schedules really packed uh, as you're studying? Um, at least for me, uh, I think it being easy to, easy to plan courses is different than whether your schedule is really packed or not. So it might be really easy to get all your classes together, but depending on uh, how many you, the classes you need to take that's you know really going to be the question about how, how academically hard it is um, so at least for me uh, i've been taking the maximum number of classes each semester at hku so far which is six classes and so that's a lot of classes and it's a heavy workload so i definitely have to work really hard um, but i've also recognized that when i'm applying for classes um, sometimes one class may not fit in the schedule, um, but there's always another class that is just as interesting that I can take. So there are options. So there is ways to kind of uh, manipulate your schedule around and, you know, pick and choose and find a way that, you know, the classes that you are interested in fit together in a really neat puzzle that'll work for your semester. Yeah, I think also another thing to keep in mind when you're scheduling classes for this program is that you really only have two years to fit in some of the opportunities. Some things will be able to be counted by either university. But what that means is that sometimes you have kind of an unconventional progression of courses. Like for me, uh, as a politics major, I actually had to start taking the introductory courses to politics at the same time that I started taking my advanced courses to politics. That's pretty uncommon pattern that other students probably won't have. So in that sense, I think your schedule is kind of packed like semester by semester you're going to be taking courses from like a greater variation in difficulty and this also means that there's some complications in planning sometimes because you might uh like for example need to take an intro level course that's only offered once a year and there's one section of it but also you need to take another course and so there's a, there is as julia said a little bit of schedule manipulation required but 
it's not like you're without support here. Like you're able to talk to uh, the the dual degree uh, advisors on both the Berkeley and the HKU side, and you can communicate with both schools about what works best for you. So you won't be doing this without support, but it can be a little bit more complicated sometimes. Yes, I think what uh, both Julia and Kath are being the first cohort um, in this dual degree program experienced a lot of these let's work out exactly uh, how to advise and what sort of ad, uh, advice and support um, very specific for the dual degree and we work with them uh, because they actually came in there's no example for them to follow there's no schedule that says it absolutely worked this way and they can just copy it so definitely they've gone through a lot of these um, advising a lot of these support um, as they move through um, another question, and I think uh, we probably, Amy and I, will both have to take that. Um, any scholarships for this? Um, maybe I'll start off with the HKU side. So I uh, mentioned earlier, um, for the dual degree, your tuition fees, uh, scholarships are always tied to the fees that you'll be paying at the institution. So at the university, so for the first two years, you will be assessed for the entrance scholarship as you were a regular HKU degree student. Uh, so we, the entrance scholarship is a merit-based scholarship, uh, and we will look at your academic achievement. Uh, we look at your application profile. And if you are awarded an entrance scholarship, it will be based on the secondary school achievements that you have presented to us. So uh, for that, that will be available from the HKU side. Um, Amy, maybe a bit about the financial aid as well for the Berkeley side? Yeah, yeah. Um... So it's complicated, uh, and this is where, we haven't mentioned it before, um, but University of California is a public university, um, and that really wouldn't play a factor too much when you're applying, or even when you're studying there. But for financial aid, it does matter. It means that the majority of our financial aid dollars and scholarships are actually going to California residents. That's our top priority. Um, and then after that, there is limited amount left uh, for US citizens in other states who could apply for federal um, aid and very little available then for international students who wouldn't have access to uh, US federal aid or state aid and the scholarships on campus are limited as well. So I say that to be very upfront and honest, uh, if you are on our campus as a California resident, you will find that it is that there are more opportunities for for funding uh, if you are an international student, truly an international student on an F1 visa. Um, it can be quite difficult to find scholarship opportunities for a public institution like Berkeley. Sure. Okay. So um, let me just take let me just take a look at the questions that are still coming in. Um, one of the questions is about how many students are admitted each year. I think we don't have a hard quota uh, on how many we wish to take. Um, it is definitely not a humongous, you know, huge program. Uh, I think what we're aiming for will go 10, 15 students uh, that we will be looking at. Um, the cohort size obviously depends because we are also looking at very talented students who might have other choices as well. So. Um, there's no fixed number that we're limiting it to at this point, but it will be a competitive program for admission to the university. Uh, and other question, and a very specific, again, to the UC app question. Uh, when filling in the UC app, um, is there a specific major that they have to put down uh, and to choose uh, for applying to this dual degree program? So that's an excellent question. The the Berkeley application is actually um, not going to be focused on the major, but it will be critical that you choose the right college. So for example, um, if you choose to apply, you'll choose the UC California application, you'll pick the Berkeley campus, and then you're going to choose within the Berkeley campus, the College of Letters and Science. So we talked about that earlier. That's where this program is housed. There are other options on that application. Don't pick them, pick the College of Letters and Science. Um, and then within the College of Letters and Science, the application process might ask you if you know what you want to study. And you're welcome to say one of these programs, but the reality is for the admissions process, the primary concern is whether or not you picked the College of Letters and Science. That's what we, we really need you to do 
beyond that, your major can still be flexible and probably will not impact um, the admissions process. And if I may add on to that as well, on the due degree application that is very specific for this program, uh, we will ask you whether or not you're applying to the Bachelor of Arts at HKU or the Bachelor of Social Sciences at HKU. Um, they are two separate degree programs, so we do need you to know whether or not you're going to a more arts and humanities stream or the more social sciences related stream, because that will affect uh, which of the two degree programs you will end up being admitted to at HKU. So uh, definitely, so the, for this due degree, College of Letters and Science at the UC app and then all the due degree app, let us know whether or not you're going for the Bachelor of Arts or the Bachelor of Social Sciences. Um, I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Sorry, they're jumping up a little bit. Um, English, so uh, there is a local student, an uh, HKDSE student, so a student who is doing the Hong Kong diploma, um, asking IELTS if it's still required. So for, if for admissions to Berkeley, uh, would you prefer to see a TOEFL or an IELTS for your admissions? Um, so actually, the the two are absolutely um, equivalent for us. It doesn't matter which one, uh, whichever one is most accessible accessible to you. Um, also, this year we started using Duolingo, um, so you could also try the Duolingo test, which is just a different format. Um, so I think for us, it's mostly just knowing that you have taken one of them um, and that you've done, you know, the minimum. Uh, expectation and maybe even a little better to prove your English proficiency. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too hung up on which of those tests to take. Um, just take one if you, if you need to prove English proficiency. Yes, so, um, so keep, the, keep in mind that while for admissions to HKU, uh, we do not need or we don't even look at any IELTS or TOEFL results that were submitted uh, because this is a dual degree program that is both HKU and Berkeley, you do need to keep in mind that uh, there is a need for you to demonstrate English proficiency. So uh, in one of the ways uh, that is mentioned uh, by Amy would be great. And another question that uh, is also related to Jupiter, and then maybe I'll take that. So uh, is it a requirement to apply HKU BA in Jupiter, uh, or do you need to place BA in band A before December 9th? So uh, rephrase that a little bit. You are only required to submit the JUPIS application if you're an HKDSE student. So for all of you who are in IB, A-level, US high school, Canadian high school, uh, even though you may be a local student doing these international or regional qualifications, you are not required to apply through JUPIS. So only HKDSE students are required to apply also on JUPIS for your BA or Bachelor of Social Sciences. Um, whether or not you need to put it before December 9th, I think we would very much love to know that you're intended to go into a BA program before December 9th. Uh, however, the same rules for you to make uh, adjustments and to reprioritize your Jupiter choices will still apply uh, for this program. But for you, if you are an HKDSE student, for you to successfully enroll in the dual degree program with Berkeley, you are required to be eventually enrolling into HKU BA in your Jupiter choices. So I'm getting uh, the signal. Maybe what I should do is I uh, hope we have covered most of the question uh, on the chat. If not, uh, what you can also do is contact us. Um, here are the emails that you are more than welcome to write to us, uh, whether or not it's via HKU or via Berkeley, uh, to have any questions you might have about the two degree answer. So. Um, for today, before we go, um, any last words, sharing, encouragement you wanna you wanna say? Um, I definitely encourage if anyone is interested to you know please apply to this program. I'm really glad I did, and I've had a really great experience so so far. So I definitely vouch for it, and I, I really hope more people will be interested. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a really unique program, and. Um, yeah, it might not be the typical four-year college experience, which I think a lot of people look for, but it's definitely, I don't really think that matters. Like it, it, you will enjoy the program. You'll find it special in its own way, even if it's not the conventional college experience. Great. Right. Well, Amy, I, I, I think just, they, go on. I just want to add really quickly that um, you have such a gift having Keita and Julia here. I just want you to use that resource as much as you can. They shared their information and um, they are pioneers in this program. They are also an enormous uh, 
amount of information and just real, honest, free information um, that can help you think about whether or not this is a good program for you. I'm happy to go through all the rules and the websites, but I think their lived experience is a real gift. So thank you for being here. Definitely. And thank you, Amy, for joining us um, quite early in the morning as well from your side. It was a pleasure. <laughs> so, um, well, so um, I think that's a wrap for the session. Thank you once again for joining us. And if you have questions, uh, we will be checking these emails uh, maybe on Monday when we get back to the office. So thank you.